From any of these places around here, you can't keep track. No. Oh, here we are. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, if you go out, I'll fix the cases. Oh, yes. Yes, if you would. My name is Mrs. Palfrey. Oh, yes. You'll be wanting Mr. Wilkins, will you? People coming in as residents, they sometimes like a few words with the manager before they settle in. Well, I don't think that'll be necessary. I have all the particulars. the rest of it, madam. If you would, thank you. What's she like? Uh, rather military, I thought. Could be a colonel's widow, or even a general's. Oh, hell. Oh, well, I quite like service people. Wilkins put her in number 85. She can't be a general's widow, or she's done better than that. Campbell mousse, celery soup. Roast surry fowl. It can't be a fortnight since we tackled that one. Bloody awful mess they make of it anyway. Oh, blithe newcomer, I have heard. I hear thee and rejoice. Oh, cuckoo, shall I call thee bird, or but a wandering voice? When I am lying on the grass, thy twofold shout I hear. From hill to hill it seems to pass, at once both loud and clear. No, at once far off and near, once far off and near.
celery soup, please, and the roast surrey fowl. Thank you. Why, madam? No, sir. Oh, uh, something I thought might interest you. It suddenly occurred to me this afternoon. Must tell Antonio on my travels. Italy, it was your country. Now, we were looking at frescoes, murals, you understand, and there was this. I say, now, here I must lower my voice. The most enormous sex organ on the wall. Enormous. I ah! <laughs> don't know what I mean. Frescoes. Coffee, madam? Yes, please. For one, is it? Yes, for one. Right. Mrs. Palfrey, Wilkins, I'm the manager. I wrote to you in Scotland. Oh, yes. yes. Sorry I wasn't on hand when you arrived. I trust everything was satisfactory. Oh, yes, perfectly. Thank you. Not a day for travelling? No. You should uh, sit by the fire, make yourself comfortable. Well, I thought I'd wait a little. I know that people have their favourite chairs. I don't oh, you don't want to worry about that. We don't encourage things like favourite chairs. After all, it's not a club, the Claremont. It's a hotel for the general public. Well, if I can be of service. Naturally, I'll let you know. Pompous tweet. To get the thing warmed up, I suppose. Goodness, is it that already? Oh, Mrs. Burton, mm. almost time. Oh. Oh. Well, I'll make my own way. Oh. <coughs> Aren't you coming to look at the television? My name is Elvira Arbuthnot. Oh, I'm Palfrey, Laura Palfrey. We always like to look at the serial on Sunday. It isn't much, but it makes a break. Oh, thank you. Yes, I, I should like to. Thank you. As soon as I finish this row, I must weigh, dye my hair. <laughs> my cousin's coming here for lunch. Yeah. Do you have relatives in London? I have a grandson who lives in Hampstead. Oh, then you'll be seeing a great deal of him, I expect. <laughs> Relations make all the difference, although one would never make one's home with them. Oh, never. Hard as one is pressed. <laughs> but I like to see them. I like them to see me. If it weren't for all my London relatives, I do believe that I should go and live in Bournemouth. But the climate's milder, and there's always something going on. I should have thought there was always something going on in London. Uh, yes, it's true that there is, but one just doesn't seem to go to it. Uh. <laughs> oh, it's your grandson that you're knitting for, then, is it? Yes. Yes, yes it's nice. It's a nice colour for a sweater. <laughs> He'd be pleased, I'm sure. Cheers! Yes. <laughs> Awful hole, don't you think? The Claremont. <laughs> well, I suppose you're not used to these places. My dear, I could write a book. They're all the same. Before this, I was at the Estorp, Bloomsbury. <laughs> oh, and how sad. Bloom's breath can be on a winter's afternoon. Still, I'm very lucky. I've got a brother-in-law who keeps an eye on me. Oh, he's awfully good, Harry. Comes to dinner once a week, and occasionally he takes me on the town. Mm. Have you any relatives in London? I have a grandson who works at the British Museum. 
No one else. Uh, no, thank you. I don't smoke. British Museum. Oh, dear. You'd be nearer to him at the Astor. Huh? Will he be coming to see you? Oh, yes, yes. Desmond will be coming. He knows where to find me. I've written to him. There's always been a link, you know? It's a relationship that sometimes skips a generation. <coughs> <coughs> yes, yes, of course. Oh, I like to see young faces. Makes you feel alive. We poor old women who've outlived husbands and friends. People who would know what one wanted to read. A bad choice. Tell all. And this one will be just as silly. Oh, it's not her fault, of course. But since I can't get about so easily, I have to allow Mrs. Post to change my library books. And well, well, as I said, one needs a husband or a close friend, someone who knows one's taste. And where, at our advanced age? Have you friends in London? No, no close friends. We lived abroad, you see, a great deal. Fatal, that. <laughs> Army, was it? The Foreign Service. Mr. Oh, Osmond bought the army. Still, I can imagine Burma and such places one gets out of touch. We need to work. I think it was Dr. Johnson said. We need to work to keep our friendships in repair. But still, I am told you have a grandson in London. Oh, yes, yes. Desmond's here. His parents, my daughter and her husband, live in Scotland. And you wouldn't care to settle up north, I suppose? I doubt if I could stand the climate. There is that, of course. My dear Elizabeth, thank you for your letter and the most amusing card. All in all, I think I can say I'm settling in quite nicely. I still have moments when I feel I'm the odd new girl at school, of course. The other guests, the residents, seem nice enough, but they've all been here some time and are inclined to pry, I find. Irish stew and galley more free. Oh, thank you. I can never deal with this thing. <coughs> well, thank you. when are we going to see this grandson of yours? If he doesn't come soon, we shall begin to think he doesn't exist. Oh, Desmond will come when he has the time. Well, probably dodging the sort of meal he'd get here. Don't blame him for that. It's bloody awful. Sir, this is our father's sister. She's very good, really. She pops in whenever she can, and she's always prepared to take Mrs. Barbuthnot out shopping or, or for a drive somewhere. Not much said about it, but there's quite a family bond, I fancy. Oh, will you be wanting your milk? No, please. Have you finished your tea? Yes, dear. Very pleasant. There is something I have to tell you. Yes. I've been asked to leave the hotel. Asked? Oh, in the nicest way. They don't intend to throw me out. It's a request, not a demand. I'm willing to wait till I find an alternative place. But what? Oh, I'd rather spare us both the details. Well, dear, when asked to leave. For heaven's sake, I must know more than that. What is it? Trouble with the star? No. Then what? I become incontinent. It's not incontinence in its true form, I suppose. I do wake in the night, but then my back is in such pain, and the lavatory is so far away, I find it hard to rouse myself. I tend to doze, and when I do wake up again, the bed... How long has this been happening? Long enough. One of the maids, an Irish girl, helped me to cover up for quite a while. But then the housekeeper, well, they were bound to find out. What are you going to do? I don't know. I was hoping you might be able to help me. Oh, dear. Oh, I'm 
so late. I've been to the hairdresser. Harry's going to take me out tonight. Boxing match, if you please. Do you mind if I sit here? Oh, no, do. I, I was just oh. going, as a matter of fact. Oh, no, no, please. no, no, no. I have to write unless I want to catch oh. the evening post. We've both agreed we couldn't live under the same roof. Now you know we have. Yes. After all, the Claremont's not the only answer. I'm prepared to make inquiries. I'm sure we can find you somewhere very comfortable. A nursing home? Not necessarily. They have hotels now that recognize this sort of thing, where one can make arrangements. We'll take our time and really look around. In the meantime, you're not to worry. We'll work something out. Find a nice place. My promise. My dear Elizabeth, I wonder if you've had any particular word of Desmond lately. I don't want to sound a possessive old granny, but visiting relatives are such a feature of our life here that I'd rather like to show him off. Apart from the pleasure of actually seeing him, of course. May be dry with the exception of the northern parts of the country, which may have some scattered showers towards evening. Mightily dry. I don't want a damn Doshi telling me about my English weather. You thought there were plenty of wholesome English girls who could have done a simple job like that. Mine laid the rye. Well, it'll be a change from the rye. Oh, they choose these people deliberately, you know. The whole idea is to break down educational standards. It deadens the effect of comprehensive schools, of course. A friend of mine at Truro says they've been having lovely weather. Trunk call for you, madam. Oh. You can take it in the box. Oh, thank you. Scotland, I suppose. The daughter, yes. Hello? Mother, is that you? I've been hanging on for ages. Uh, Ian, would you please put Wee McGregor in the hall? I'm sorry, dear. I can't hear you. It's all right, darling. A little tyke trouble. Look, I'm ringing about Desmond. I can't think why he hasn't been in touch with you. The young these days, they're hopeless. I, I've quite taken a scunner against them. Anyway, I'll write to him. Oh, no, no, no. I will. It'll shake him out of that London sloth of his. But how are you, apart from that? Everything all right? Yes, everything's fine. Good. Well, there are the pips. I won't go on. Ian sends his love, and I will write to Desmond. Bye-bye, darling. Goodbye, my dear, and thank you for... Oh. Good line. Oh, yes, yes, it was very clear. Oh, yes, you... <laughs> All the talk about the weather's given me the sniffles. <laughs> I hate to impose on you, but Mrs. Post has a cold, and she decided to stay in bed. Quite all right. I'm going for my constitutional. I can easily call in at the library. What sort of books do you like? Something by Lord Snow. I simply can't bear trash. Any particular one, I mustn't get you something you've already read. It doesn't matter. Yes, but if you read One it, can always read a good book twice. In fact, one always should read a good book twice. Yes, of course. Thank you. She's very difficult with library books. Gets Mrs. Post into a flap. She can never remember whether it's Marjorie or Elizabeth Bone she has to get. Then there are two girls, not to mention a couple of Flemings. Well, I can hardly go wrong with Lord Snow. No, indeed. <laughs> oh, you're very good, oh, I, I must say. Oh, not at all. I can't tell you what a pleasure it is to have something to do for someone. Thank you, Sam.
This is the latest teepee snow, isn't it? I thought I'd take that as an early one. Thank you. Beside the ungathered rice, he lay. Sickle in his hand. Breast was bare. Matted hair lay buried in the sand. Ooh. Oh dear, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't talk yet. Make you a cup of tea. I couldn't give you so much trouble. There will be no trouble at all. The kettle's boiling away like mad. Yes, I will make you a cup of tea. My name is Ludo, by the way. Ludovic Myers. Rather well, something, don't you think? Mine is Palfrey. Laura Palfrey. <laughs> then we both have ridiculous names. It's lucky you caught me in. I just got back from work. Just putting the curtains together. Where do you work? Harrods. Harrods? Oh. Which department? Oh, no, no. Not for Harrods. At Harrods. In the banking hall. Or rather, nowadays, in the small apology for it upstairs. I take my writing and a few sandwiches and I find myself a quiet little corner. Look. Thank you. It's comfortable and cosy up there. And it saves life in the gas fire, which eats up money. You're a writer. Well, at present, that's what I'm trying to be. Although I have had other jobs. Sugar? No, thank you. Oh. I'm keeping you from your writing. Oh, no, no. I've been at it all day. I'm going to have a little read now and open a tin of something. But what about you? Have you far to go? Near the Cromwell Road, the Claremont Hotel. Do you know it? No. I'll tell you what, though. While you're having your tea, I'll pop up round the corner and get you a cab. It shouldn't cost too much from here. Oh, would you? I should be so grateful. Nothing to it. Thank you. Ready and waiting. Oh, thank you. Oh. Oh. Now, before I 
all right, though. I should be so glad if you would dine with me one night at the Claremont. I should like to repay your kindness in some way. Well, that would be very grand. Would Saturday suit you? On Saturday, there's usually rather a better menu. Saturday would be fine. Good. Good morning, Mrs. Post. Are you feeling better? Oh, I am much better today, thank you. I had a really good night's rest. Oh, I'm so glad. I must say, these books have brought back a very damp. Oh, I'm so sorry. I had a slight fall on my way home. I was obliged to sponge them. Oh. You didn't hurt yourself, I hope. Oh, no, no, not, not really. Oh, good morning. I'll have my usual, please. The Continental, right, yes. Oh, and while I think of it, I'm entertaining a guest, a young man, to dinner on Saturday night. Saturday night? Well, Saturday's the best night, don't you think? Saturday is good, sure. Yes, yes. well, then, if you'd ask them to put it in the book or whatever it is they do, mm. would that be all right? Right. Thank you. So, your grandson's coming to see you at last, is he? It's ridiculous, you see, but I should have told them straight away, of course, but I was so surprised. And Mrs. Arbuthnot is inclined to be so very condescending. Um, why don't you sit down, Mrs. Palfrey? I'm not quite sure that I understand. Well, it may not affect you at all, of course. It's merely in case I should have to introduce you. In passing, you understand. We're rather inclined to be a, an inquisitive little set. If you wouldn't mind letting them think, just for the evening, that you're my grandson. Or is that too much to ask? If it is, you must tell me and I'll explain to them. <laughs> No, 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 don't do that. <laughs> I don't mind a bit. We'll enjoy ourselves. Have a laugh. Oh. oh, I'm so hoping you'd understand. Well, I won't keep you any longer. 7.15 on Saturday. Mm -hmm. I'll be waiting in the lounge, and we'll have a glass of sherry before dinner. Fine, lovely. And I shall call you Desmond. Christ. No, Desmond. Grandmama, how nice to see you. Desmond, I do sit down. Um, I'll get us a drink. No, I'll let No, 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 no. No, I'm staying. Thanks. What's going on? This is Palfrey's grandson. He's rather a dish. He's very good looking, I must say. I can't understand those shoes. Very odd, flapping his way in like that. Oh, eccentric, no doubt, all these young fellows nowadays. Some sort of fad at the British Museum, I shouldn't wonder. Antonio, we we'll have two glasses of sherry, please. Medium dry, I think. Is that all right for you, Desmond? And would you please bring me the menu and the wine list? Thank you. We haven't got a proper bar. You see, we ring the bell and... Antonio brings our orders. Fully for us. I have a feeling that I'm being stared at. Well, you are rather, I'm afraid. Tell me who's who. I won't look straight away. Well, over there is Mrs. Burns and her brother-in-law. He comes to dinner quite regularly. And they are what I think you might call drinking over by the fire is Mr. Osmond. He's our only male resident and rather out of things. And there's Mrs. Post. And Mrs. Arbuthnot. Which one is Mrs. Arbuthnot? She has the walking sticks. She has arthritis, I'm sorry to say, and she was very kind to me the first day I arrived here when I was feeling rather low. One doesn't forget such things. Thank you, Antonio. Thank you. I hope this is to your taste. 
to your very good health, Grandmama. <laughs> So wonderful. Well, we can get well, I can't if you like. No, no, as a matter of fact, I think I'll have the soup and then the veal. Well, it, it might be quicker. So, you lured him away from the British Museum at last, have you? Yes, my grandson. Desmond, this is Mrs. Arbuthnot. How do you do? It's nice to see you do get some time off. Is the museum open on Sunday? Oh, yes. Sunday is one of our busiest days. How very tiring. Always like slave labor, isn't it? I'd like to hear more about it. But I must go into dinner. A monster. You did very well. Tell me, how did you choose this place? Oh, I read about it when I was staying in Scotland with my daughter. Your mother, incidentally. My... Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I saw an advertisement in the paper, special winter raids, sex and cuisine. It sounded quite attractive. And she didn't try to stop you? Who? My mother in Scotland. Oh, goodness, no. No, Elizabeth respects my independence. And I'm very glad she does. Well, shall we go in? Portions are rather small, I'm afraid, but it's to your liking, is it? Oh, it's marvellous. I've never enjoyed myself more with my clothes on. do with yourself all day? Oh, I keep quite busy. I write letters and I go for walks. And every day I learn a verse of poetry. Or try to. It's a memory test, you see. What else? Well, there's a certain interest, you know, in living in a place like this, watching people come and go. And then the hotel do do their best look after us, you know, to make us feel comfortable. So that in the end, one begins to look on it as home. Although, of course, we are not allowed to die here. <laughs> Shh, don't be sure. <laughs> but don't you think, don't you think that's rather sad? <laughs> My dear Grandmama Palfrey, I see nothing sad about you. Nothing in the least sad. <laughs> This camembert is wonderful. You must try some. No, 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 really. Uh, come now, no arguments. You'll have your grandmother awake all night with indigestion. You won't mind if I order coffee in here. I think perhaps we'd better not risk the lounge. Yes, it would be pushing our luck, I suppose. something for you. Oh? The handkerchief you wrapped round my knee. Oh. How is it? Your knee? Oh, quite all right, thank you. Well, that was the most delicious meal, Grandmama. It'll set me up for a whole week. Desmond always calls me Granny. I can't tell you how much I prefer Grandma. Whether it's my fault or not, I don't know. But it seems to me he's going off. Where is your grandson? Rushed away and left you, has he? Yes, he couldn't stay, unfortunately. <laughs> he did seem to enjoy his dinner. Oh, enormously. And he makes such a fuss of you. Oh, he's charming. And such a sense of humor, too. And sublime. Yes, he reminds me so much of my husband, you know, when we first met. 
Really? Quite uncanny. Stopping you with biscuits. Now that he's at last turned up, I expect we'll be seeing quite a lot of him. Yes, but of course he's very busy. Thank you for your kindness. Another wet Sunday. Really, we seem fated. Well, March is never very reliable. Next month, please do. Spring? I shan't believe it until there's a decent show along the Fall of Wall. Tonight. Don't bother to chat me up. Birmingham. What? Your accent, Birmingham. I happen to come from Pinner. Is that in the Harrods delivery area? <laughs> You're a director, I suppose. Fine place of business. I'll get lost, will you? Doris, Eve, Mabel. Do you know what someone named Mabel looks like? Only trying to guess. My name's Rosie. Rosie from dinner. Very nice. What do you say to a drink? My name's Ludovic, Ludo. You have to be joking. Do you know this trick? I'll drop this fiver, and if you can catch it between your thumb and your finger, you can have it. Try it. You probably think it's very simple. Try it. Well, I've never seen that happen before. Well, you have now. No, no, it's yours. But I'm amazed. Probably because you were sitting down. Oh, belt up. No, I don't feel it belongs to me anymore. Look, there's a Chinese takeaway around the corner. What do you say we get a double serve of everything and go back round to my place? Sweet and sour pork. And chicken and water chestnuts. Where do you live? Somewhere ghastly, I'll be bound. You almost finished his sweater. Yes. And what will you do? Will you send it to him or will he call and collect it? Well, I hadn't really thought. I might drop it in on him, perhaps. This is really my weekend for going home, but my parents have gone winter sporting. Every other weekend I go down there and stoke up roast beef in Yorkshire, all the things I loathed when I lived there. And I pinch great slabs of fruitcake from the larder. It's another world. I know. My mother has a love nest in Putney. She's a sort of a kept woman. And a sort of? Well, she has a part-time job as a receptionist, but I think the major pays the rent. Oh, they never have any new ideas, do they? Mm. 
just be noodles. I joke on. What does your mother look like? Hmm. Bags under the eyes. Auburn hair, dark at the roots. Nice figure. Well, that's something. Where's a smart kind of clothes you find in a Jewish madam shop? But somehow there's a feeling all is not well underneath. Grubby shoulder straps, sordid old roll-ons. I must say, you certainly don't spare the details. Where'd you get all that from? I'm a writer. Well, I'm about to be a writer. Well, no, I already am a writer, really. I you didn't know such things existed anymore. Sordid old roll-ons. <laughs> I can't imagine the Major would care much for that, would he? Anyway, how can you afford to keep her? My uncle was a colonel, and he never had a penny. This one has some dodgy job in steel. He's a wartime major, really, though. He fancies the title. He must be old, then. Why? From that war. Sixty-odd, I suppose? Don't. It makes me squirm. You don't like old people? I don't choose to think about them. What about your parents? Oh, they laugh about in their way. They give awful drinks parties with about a hundred people standing around, jam-packed, shouting at one another. Sometimes of a Sunday when I'm there, I go around with a tray of things. Bits of caviar on toast, that sort of thing. And the women say, oh, how pretty, meaning the bits of lemon in the caviar. And the American ones say, my, but somebody's been busy around here. But they're really awful to me, because they know that their old men have been squinting down at my bosom. You haven't got a bosom. And I shall keep it that way, thank you. I don't want one of them sticking out jobs and have to go to a Jewish madam shop for my clothes. Where does your father fit into all this anyway? He doesn't. He got very tired and died. Hmm. Sorry. This rice soon gets cold, I must say. I did my best with my father. Tried to buck him up a bit. You know, if you don't praise people just a bit early on, they'd die of despair. Or turn into Hitler's. Do they? Mm. Do you want these water chestnuts? When did you arrive? Five minutes ago. I haven't even unpacked. I thought I must just pop in and say hello. <gasps> really, it's extraordinary. This place doesn't change at all. Everybody sitting around in the same old chairs. Mr. Osmond scowling at me in the same old way. And Mrs. Arbuthnot. I bet she's resting after lunch. Poor Miss Benson's gone. Oh, yes. I read the Times obituary. Fancy her being an OBE. A nursing home at Folkestone, wasn't it? Ah, oh, but I'm afraid I look upon that as a blessing, really. Who's in number 85, then? Mrs. Palfrey. My dear, do forgive me. Oh, Marjorie Sway. How do you do? I come up from the Cotswolds for a fortnight every spring. Affairs of business and pleasure. And I've made this place my London snuggery. In the old days, it was Browns, of course. But I'm afraid those times have gone forever. Never mind. The Claremont is cheap and cheerful, and one's always sure of seeing friendly faces. What about your grandchildren? Are they well? Flourishing. Oh. I've brought a batch of all the latest oh, photographs. Now, come upstairs with me, and I'll let you have them, and then you can pass them round, and we'll all have tea together, shall we? You people can tell me what's going on in London. Oh, yes, lovely. What she means, of course, is she'll tell us what's going on in London and what's likely to be going on now she's arrived here. Lady Swain is not one of Mr. Osmond's favourites. No, I'm afraid she damn well isn't. Well, she's got me at it now. I'm afraid I look on that as a blessing. I'm afraid those times have gone forever. I'm afraid I think the fox is revelling it. And every morning she'd be waving a theatre programme from the night before and telling us about some blasted dinner party in her honour. You can see, we're in for quite a fortnight. I'm afraid even to think about it. I let myself in, darling. So I see. Well, I know you don't go to Harrods on a Saturday afternoon. I thought I'd play mother and just see how you were getting on. And where's the Major? Gone to a football match at Twickenham. Oh, no, no, no. Do get it right. Not football. 
Rugger. Well, I'm sure you didn't say Twickenham. Twiggers. Rugger and Twiggers. Well, whatever it is. They stand around in car parks, drinking out of boots. You can't be serious. The cars. They keep the bottles in the boots of their cars. Oh. I see. What's this? I don't know. It was on the doorstep when I came in. Well, how's the novel coming along? Novels don't come along. They have to be pushed a bit. Anyway, I've laid the old one aside. I've started on something new. And I have a feeling it's going to be quite good. Got a fantastic title for it. They weren't allowed to die there. What do you think? Fancy, darling, I preferred it when you were an actor. Oh, I really loved it then. My son's on the stage, I used to say, and everyone was simply thrilled and died to hear more. Rare but Canterbury. I was never on the stage once the curtain was up. Well, I'm sure every great actor started that way. I'm sure Sir Lawrence had to do his stint. You lack his patience and perseverance, that's all. Besides, it's so dull and lonely, sitting there scribbling away day after day. Lacks glamour. What have you got there? Somebody's knitting me a sweater. Oh. I had no idea you even knew anyone who could knit. Leaves are wrong. I've made them far too long. It's hopeless. No, no, no. It's the most beautifully warm, and it's the first thing anyone has ever knitted for me. I like it. Oh. A taxi, Summers, if you would. Breath of spring. Ah, exquisite. Alas, though, they never last. My grandson. I've heard of you. I've heard of you. Desmond, this is Lady Swain. You're at the BM, I believe. For my sins. Do you know Carr Templeton? Only vaguely. I'm hardly on that plane as yet. I suppose not. But you're young. Your time will come. Well, I must go. I'm being whirled round London in a way more fitting to a dead than to an old, old lady. <laughs> this evening, I'm off to the Savoy for my sins. Bye! Well, <laughs> I knew she wouldn't have mentioned whoever he was unless it had been someone very grand. I'm sorry to enmesh you in this falsehood. Will you stay and have dinner with me? I've just been looking at the menu. No, I, I can't. I have to meet a bird. A bird? Named Rosie. Oh. I tell you what, though. Why don't you come and have dinner at my place one evening, would you? Well, yes. It's Wednesday, say. We'll share a tin of something. Ah, food. Now, that must be my contribution. No, 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 no. no, no, no. I have a Harrods card. I'm always looking at those pies, delicious things on the provision counter and the cheeses and just wishing I had an opportunity to buy some. One misses that, you know, doing the housekeeping and one's own shopping. Very well. Now I'll supply the wine. A bottle of Matthews Rosé, probably. I'm sure that'll be splendid. More pie? No, 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 really. Ah, what a nice dinner. Good old Harrods. Oh, and the wine, too. Wine is just right. I find these glasses charming. Mine has Olay painted on it. Mine has Skull. There were three originally, but Salute got itself broken. It came with a flat, of course. Someone bought them and left them. I often wonder who he was. What kind of a person. That's your writer's curiosity. Olay. Skull. <laughs> oh. The drink is beginning to tell. It's very sad, really. <laughs> this place is losing tone. Oh, no. Oh, yes. My sister noticed it some time ago. In fact, she's been urging me to leave ever since. But you wouldn't go. I might. Yeah, I found a suitable alternative. My sister's been making various inquiries. And I must say, 
Some of the places sound very tempting. Oh. Are you ever irritated by the claims on you of other people? Well, I have been, I suppose, one time or another. Yes. Do you prefer to be a host or would you rather be a guest? Well, I loved the evening when you came to dinner at the Claremont. But I must say I preferred being here. If you were kept waiting by a friend, would you A, wait patiently and be forgiving so that you could both enjoy the evening, B, wait but have a row when your friend arrived, C, go home? Well, I know you wouldn't keep me waiting except for some very good reason, so I should wait patiently so that we could both enjoy the evening. Uh, this is not just me, anyone. Well, there's nowhere else I could think of. You're the only person I would be meeting. Do you ever break your word? No. That's it. Now, let's see. Mm, according to this, you have an average capacity for friendship and a well-ordered social life. Oh, goodness. I must admit it was easier when Arthur was alive. We met other couples, you know. Being a widow isn't quite the same thing. And then as one gets older, people die or drop out of your life for some reason or another. Shall I ask you the questions? No, huh? no, no. My answers would probably be the same as yours. Would they? Mm -hmm. Oh. Things like claims on one. I should have thought the viewpoint changes. I remember when I was a young married woman, I often longed to be free of my responsibilities. And now I am because my daughter no longer needs me, and you must have gathered how it is with Desmond, and I find I have such a sense of loss. No one will ever again be a burden or dependent on me. In a way, I need you. No, you don't. Not really. No, I don't have many friends, and the ones I used to have all have cars and jobs. You've got Rosie. I hardly know her. But not like this, to sit and talk. That's very kind of you. Shall we do the washing up? No, 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 I'll do it later. Very well then, my dear, I think I must be going. Must you? Yes. Very well. I'll call you a cab. No, 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 my dear. The walk will do me good. <sighs> I'll come with you. It can do me good too. My nicest evening, I think, since Arthur died. Now, do be careful with that case. It has some glass and some little knickknacks. Uh, going away, Prist. D don't open it now. Wait until you get there. You, you will let me have the address, won't you? I'll send it to you. If I find the hotel to my liking and I decide to stay... Well, perhaps when you're settled, I, I could call one day and see you. I don't you. think either of them would gain much from that. You can put those things in my car. I shall be following on behind the taxi. Mr. Wilkins, hmm. can I have a <clears throat> word with you? Yes. The so-called hotel is, in fact, a nursing home, you know. Did Mrs. Abbott not tell you that? Or, uh, Summers mentioned a forwarding address, the Braemar. Now, it so happens that an old cousin of mine was there, and I visited her once or twice. I was not impressed, a second-rate establishment. My cousin died there. She, uh, deteriorated. Please, if this is so, Mrs. Abbott not clearly does not want the rest of us to know. Oh, goodness, Don't forget. Remember, I'll be waiting for a letter. Goodbye. Mrs. Post will miss her. Yes, yeah, she will. But then she likes new faces, Mrs. Post. I dare say someone else will come along. See, what do you make of five down? I shan't be staying here on any sort of permanent basis, just until I find myself a flat in London. A trainee walk. A little Venice, I like to look out over water. Oh, difficult to find anything in those areas, I should think. Mrs. Uh, De Salis. <laughs> oh, my dear, you watch me. I've never been beaten yet. Cheers. Cheers. Have you any children? Oh, yes. I have my darling Willie. 
Oh, he's very special to me. Extra special, perhaps, because I had such a terrible pregnancy. <gasps> My dear, touch and go all the time. And in the end, a Caesar. Oh, oh he's most attractive. <laughs> Mrs. Burton, <laughs> will he be coming to see you? Here? Oh, good God, no, I shouldn't think so. Oh, some young people do come. Mrs. Palfrey's grandson. Yes, he does. And he's gorgeous, too. Well, I can't imagine Woolley at the Claremont. <laughs> you know, he was born on Christmas Day. The same day, actually, as Princess Alexandra. Really? Mm -hmm. Are you interested in the royal family? Well, I have my likes and dislikes. Oh, will you have another one of those? Mmm. I think she does a good job. The little lady. Oh, yes, she does. And the Queen Mother. Oh, I like the Queen Mum. Oh, everybody likes the Queen Mother. I won't hear a word said against her, but I have my reservations about some of the lesser fry. Oh, yes? My hairdresser told me. rubbish you've got written down here. What rubbish? Fluffy grey knickers, vein on leg the colour of grapes, tired petal softness of an old cheek, big spots on the back of shiny hand. Those are notes for the book I'm writing. Sounds terrible. Above your head. Fluffy grey knickers. Here, do you know this trick? If I were to hold this egg end to end between the palm of my hands and squeeze as hard as I could, would you believe me that it cannot possibly break? No. Watch then. It's supposed to be impossible. You're mad. Do you know that? You're stark raving mad. Well, just have to have a smaller omelet, that's all. Now, I suppose we must go and take sides about Princess Margaret. <laughs> Poppycock and twaddle. <laughs> Gosh, I prefer that to the medical discussion. Oh, yes. Mrs. Palfrey, would you do me the honour of being my guest at a Masonic do? Well, I thought they were for men only. Highly secret. Oh, it's a ladies' night. You see, I have no partner, so I rarely go, but I should like to. Well. Oh, it's not for some time yet. I simply want to make my plans and look forward to them. Yes, of course. Yes, I should oh. like to come. Well, my wife always enjoyed the oh, evening. Yes. Well, I'm sure I will too. Make a nice change. Young man asking for you, madam. I said I'd see if you'd finish lunch. Oh, it's your grandson, probably. Show him in, Summers. No, no, Summers. I, I'll, I will come out. Thank you. Mrs. Palfrey's grandson is here, I fancy. Well, that'll be interesting. I'll be able to tell you how he compares with my Willie. Hello, Granny. What are you doing here? You asked me to come. In January, this is June. Oh, one has one's work, commitments. You must go away at once and never come like this again. But why? I must have ample warning of your coming so that I can make the necessary arrangements. I don't understand. What is this place? Some kind of institution? No, 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 of course not. It's just that we haven't facilities for entertaining visitors except in the lounge, where there are some very, very old people who must not be disturbed. But any loud noise. Mother wrote insisting trenchantly that I should call to see you. Very well then. I should like to go for a walk. A walk? Yes. You mean around the streets? Granny, this is quite extraordinary. Oh, don't tell me. Something's wrong. A major. He's had a heart attack. He's ill. Yeah. Well, what, for heaven's sake? Gone. 
Not so. Oh, he's not dead, you fool. Cleared out. <laughs> got away. Left me. My dear, we wondered what had become of you. What's happened to your handsome grandson? Oh, we had some business to discuss. Unfortunately, I hadn't reckoned on the rain. Oh, it was forecast uh, on, on the wireless. Scattered rain, she said. Oh, that voice. Oh, it's a deliberate policy, of course. When little Willie comes home from the comprehensive with a botany by accent, his parents say, well, that's all right. That's how they talk on the BBC. I say, you must have a hot bath straight away and get in some dry clothes. Yes, 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 I will. Everything all right, is it? Your grandson? It was a family affair. I told you I'd find a flat with a view across some water. Rather distant water. Oh, but my dear, a view, a view. Now, when I get possession, I'll give a little party and I want you to promise to come. But all of us? Everybody, even Mr. Osmond. And with Willie's help, will he be there? Oh, yes, my dear. He does his family duty where parties are concerned. He loves them. Oh, well, speaking of families, I, I see your grandson's back again. Oh, Desmond. <coughs> Grandmama, sorry to barge in like this. Could I have a word with you? Yes, yes, of course. Oh, no, my dear, you're not rushing this young man away again without introducing if us. If you would excuse us. But she does keep him to herself, doesn't she? <laughs> Look, I understand they have family matters of particular importance to discuss. <coughs> I'm in trouble. Oh, dear. Is it Rosie? No, no why Rosie? I just wondered. No, no, it's my mother. Well, I don't want to bore you with all the details, but the thing is, you see, someone she was living with, a man, has cleared out and left her. Well, it was very much on the cards. He was a question mark, the major, dodging all the money side and all that. He sounds a bit of a bounder. He was a bit. Anyway, the thing is, it seems that he's cleared out without paying the rent, and the landlord's kicked my mother out. Oh, dear. Has she got anywhere to go? Well, she's staying at my place at the moment, but I can't keep her. I've just got the one room. She'll have to stay with her sister in Wimbledon. Anyway, that's not the point. The thing is, you see, that the landlord is holding on to my mother's clothes and odds and ends in lieu of rent. You see, that's the awkward part. He's got the flat underneath, so she can hardly clear off in the middle of the night with her things. Good oh, I think not. So it seems that she has to get her hands on 50 pounds in something of a hurry. Oh. She's come to me, of course. There's no one else to turn to. Well, so what it means, in fact, is that I need 50 pounds to get her off the hook. Alone, you understand. God, this is hell. You must understand if I hesitate. Arthur always used to say that the surest way of losing a friend was to lend him money. Oh, I'll pay you back. Well, I know you try, but in your circumstances, it won't be easy. Please forgive me. But I should hate to think that for 50 pounds, I should risk not seeing you again. Oh, damn it all. Parents should look after their own business. I've embarrassed both of us. Forgive me. Forget it. No, no. At my age, one begins to live according to a set of rules. It's quite ridiculous. In the post tomorrow, a check. What is plonk? A joke, I hope. It wasn't a joke, you know. This really is plonk. Well, I knew it by the way that Willie boy was splashing it about. Obviously. 
That photograph we see of him was taken quite some time ago. I won't twig it. How's your glass there? Oh, come on now. Let me fill it up for you. Thanks. Oh, could you tell me who the lady is in the red hat? Your hat's old fag. Sylvester, the actress. Oh, I thought it was. Goodness, I remember seeing her on the stage. Oh, well, you must go and tell her. She'll be thrilled. Let me, may I come and chat? Oh, that was crafty. Oh, uh, well, not allowed wine, you know, gout. Do so sympathize with you. I suffer from the same thing myself. Yes, yes, oh, that's really very nasty. Oh. Not nice, not nice at all. Um, would you like a peanut? Yeah, just outside, just to the right there. Yes, yes. Vicky, Mrs. Paul Fred. Oh. Thank you. The men are a bit thin on the ground. I should have asked you to bring your grandson with me. Oh, these are cheese. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. You could give him a ring, if you like. Oh, I, I'd rather not. Actually, I haven't seen him now for quite some time. I think he must be very busy. Oh. Uh, come and meet my aunt. She's just up from Brighton. Oh. This is Mrs. Paul. How did you do? I, I remember seeing you as Mrs. Darling. I took my little nephew. Uh, that would be, what, 1936, wouldn't it? Much later. Oh, but... He's a married man in Canada now, with teenage children. Much, much later. Bloody awful play, I always thought. Peter Pat. Bloody awful. They should ban it. Oh. It's yes, it's I've lived in Brighton for 25 years, and I've never put my nose inside the Royal Pavilion. I've never seen the Victoria and Albert Museum. Oh, but the nicest thing at our age is the thought that we never need bother. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> 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 boy. What was your favorite part? <laughs> the gardener. What was that in? Now you are pulling my leg. <laughs> Mrs. Palfrey, would you care to have a look at the famous view across the water? Oh, that seems a busy object to be exercised. Uh, yes. Excuse me. Let me have a look. I wouldn't give any more to the little one in lavender. I think she's drunk. Sorry to lumber you with Mrs. Palfrey. She's very much the dowager, isn't she? Oh, I like her. Why didn't you tell me the old chap he was in love with? Which old chap? That's one. Oh, Mr. Osmond? Yes. Darn it, you're mad. I lived in the same hotel with him. There was never any sign of it. Oh, I can't help that. He's in love with her. Well, uh, our next excitement will be Ladies' Night at the Masonic. Huh? Uh, yes. been how much? I've got a job. A real job? Real enough. I'm waiting on tables at a place called La Placa Taverna. It doesn't sound like you. It's a new Greek place in Chelsea, good for tips. So what about your writing? I'm doing that too in my spare time. A busy, busy bee. Yes. I could always sandwich something in, of course. Don't bother. I don't think I'm the sandwich type. I remember, I remember the house where I was born. The little window where the sun came peeping in at dawn. It never came a wink too soon or brought too long a day. Now I sometimes wish the night had tamed. That's not right. I sometimes wish the night had borne my breath away. Good evening, sir. Your tax is waiting. Oh, thank you, Summers. Have a nice time. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Well, that's a turn up for the book. 
Going to a banquet. <laughs> Poor old then. Oh, yes, sir. I suppose it could be quite a ball. I tell you what. My brother-in-law's coming this evening, and I insist. Oh. Now, I bloody insist on you joining us for dinner. Oh, that's very good of you. You know, I, I feel more and more these days as though I were a child again, being taken out and entertained. It's part of getting on, I suppose. It depends on other people for the treats and parties. Oh, come off it. You can always make your own fun if you put your mind to it. Look at those two going out tonight. They'll be kicking up their heels till all hours. Dear Grandma Palfrey. What is it? I've never seen the place at this hour before. Surprising. This is how it must have looked to Lady Swain, coming home from all those nightly revels. <laughs> yes. I've another little surprise for you. I've ordered supper. Oh, no. Well, I mean, just a sandwich and some horlicks to, to relax us, uh, round things off. Oh. Here we are. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. enjoyed the evening. Did you? All the ladies being given a gift. <laughs> oh, that's a very nice compact. I was most surprised. Well, good. I, I'm glad you liked it all. I am not a callow youth. But I can promise you devotion and a pretty decent sort of life. Be company for each other, don't you think? Potter around, go out on the spree. Oh. A, a little cottage, perhaps, with a bit of garden. I've got two friends in Ipswich who could probably find us something there for next to nothing. I mean, we could entertain occasionally. Little dinners, the odd cheese and wine set to. I mean, decent wines, of course. I mean, Sancerre, perhaps, or a cassie. Do you know that? You no. no, no, it's not widely appreciated. Of course, the reds, you can leave to me. Mr. You see, all together, I can promise you a pretty decent sort of marriage. Uh, I'm quite taken aback. I had no idea. What? Not of my respect, my admiration? I came this evening as your guest, thinking it a friendly invitation. Well, friends, of course, we must be. I mean, friendship is the lasting yes, thing. Yes, but marriage. Oh, oh Mrs. Palfrey. I am not cut out to be a widower. I've tried it, and I've failed. It's not easy for any of us to be on our own. But that is what I am bound to be. Oh, not bound. Bound by my nature. I've had one perfect marriage. Mine was perfect, too. Well, then, we should be sensible and realize that the chances of it happening again are most remote. I, I'm honored, and I thank you for the evening, but I, I really cannot discuss it any further. Goodness, you're late this morning. I had breakfast in bed. Morning, Mr. Osborne. Well, how did it go, the old fancy Francis? Oh, it's most enjoyable, thank you. Oh, I wonder if you could guide me with a stamp. I want to catch the early post for Scotland. You can leave it here if you like. Summers is about to slip around to the post office. Oh, well, yes, that will save me going out. It does look as if it might rain. Dreary. Mm. Someone's thought of you, though. Thought of? Mm -hmm. My dear Grandmama Palfrey, I am sorry for the long, long silence. 
But lo, the winter is past, and the voice of the turtle can be heard once more in the land, thank God. May I see you soon, your loving grandson, Ludo. If you are not venturing forth... I've just this moment changed my mind. I'm going for a walk. Oh, is that an invitation? I'm afraid not. Uh, Mrs. Paul Freer. I have matters to attend to in the banking hall at Harrods. Morning, Simon. Morning, madam. Dear. No questions now. I called in at the hotel and brought these along. I thought you'd want to have them by your side. Always no, exactly. Thank you. Your so-called grandmother, sir, is in hospital with a broken hip. She is not my so-called grandmother. Nor any kin at all, sir. We have met the lady's grandson. And we're not going to be taken in by a newspaper reporter masquerading as a relative. My God, I called here once before. I thought the place was queer then. I'm quite convinced now. It's a madhouse. Well, argue as you please, sir. I want to see the manager. You will not get any lurid details. I do think they might have waited till they knew what Mrs. Porter's plans were. Granny! Can you hear me? I've been sitting here for ages after the most ludicrous misunderstandings. Mother had your letter telling of some strange proposal, and she said I had to get in touch and find out whether you were being taken in by someone, married for your money, if you please. But then, of course, when I arrived at the hotel, I... Granny? Granny! Oh. Well? They say pneumonia set in. Oh. That's not good, is it? No. I asked if she'd received our flowers, but they didn't seem to know. Hello? Hello, Grandmama? I feel a little better. Good. I've got something for you. I'll tuck it under your pillow. I finished my book. I'm so glad. I'd like to talk to you about it sometime, but I promised I wouldn't stay long. Is there anything you want? The poems. Daffodils. Wordsworth. I'm trying to remember it. I wandered lonely as a cloud. Yes. Yes, would you? That floats on higher earth. What is it? I'm not sure whether I remember it myself. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vales and hills, when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils. Beside the lake, beneath the lake, be, be, beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. For oft when on my couch I lie, in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon the inward eye which is the bliss of solitude. And then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. So much in common. May 
I remember when you were a little boy. You used to hide behind those long hall curtains and you'd call for me to come and find you. And before I could look anywhere, you'd say, I'm here, Granny. You never liked mysteries. found here under the pillow sealed in an envelope. Fifty pounds. I can't think what it was doing there. We shall have to ask him to sign for it. So strange. Was there no one with her when she died? Well, her grandson had been here a little earlier. I'm her grandson. Oh, her other grandson. He'd been reading poetry to her and she was sleeping quite peacefully when he left. There's some mistake. She had no other grandson. Oh, well, somebody got it wrong, perhaps. But it was quite a lovely death. She simply slipped away. No pain, no fuss. She had such lovely manners. Can I organize a cup of tea for you? Uh, no, I won't stop. There's a lot to be done. It's all been a shock. Uh, tragic, really. She'd made such a happy life for herself in London. Parties, you know, and friends. And lately, there had even been a proposal of marriage. Oh, how sweet. I know she's a marvelous auntie, though, of course. I think in the end, the only happiness will be one my touch. Nothing in the Telegraph. No, in the Times. They decided, I suppose, there was no one left who'd be interested. 